Well, you uncovered here, you talked about Tulsa, society in Tulsa, how were you, you were used as a teenager to round up using Bible tracks to attract young people to get in a van and go, you know, to ending up being taken to a, a satanic ritual instead of a prayer meeting. And, and a lot of these kids um, I didn't ever see again. I don't know where they took them. And they took them there, and you, you mentioned that some may have been killed. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I know some of them were killed. And then some of them were hauled off to who knows where. I don't know what they did with them. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I don't... it could be another Manchurian candidate. You don't know. They could, it could be an assassin. But whatever they did, they, you rounded them up. You were out there with Bible tracts saying, come to a prayer meeting. Then they would be driven, not, not by small little criminals, but, but criminals may have been doing the driving, but to a place where the elites of your city and your society controlled, controlled the, the, um, the, the city, if you will. You know, and, and these are the people that were calling the shots, and these are the people that were commissioning you and others, and you were programmed to do this. I mean, you know, it's not like you just did it on your own, you know, free will. Your free will was impinged upon. But, you know, you were, you were controlled and in a generational mind control program, if you will, that would recruit you for the purpose or bring you up for the purpose of having kind of like they could trigger you so that you would then go hand out Bible tracts and lure kids to their death. Yeah, basically. Oh. And, and I know a lot of these kids, I mean, I, mean, I know this for my own self because even I was taken to a lot of those Vesper meetings over at Oral Roberts. And Oral Roberts Vesper, Univer- Tulsa. Yeah, Oral Roberts University. Yes. And those Vesper meetings are basically supposed to be like prayer meetings or whatever, I guess. Right. And and, and I, I have, you know, memories of going in there and, and seeing all the, you know, the students and different people that they would bring in or some of them that would come in with me. And then I would zone out. I mean, I don't know if I was drugged. I don't know if I was triggered into another personality. I don't know what happened. But, I mean, I would remember hearing them play certain uh, religious songs, singing, you know, like somebody have a guitar or whatever, and they'd be in, in this room kind of like sitting around, you know. And then I would, it was like I could feel myself phasing out during this praise and worship song. Mm -hmm. And then I would come to and and I would be under Oral Roberts University, because they have an underground under Oral Roberts University, literally. And they have a a, a satanic altar. They have rooms down there where they do torture and they do mind control and programming. And I I would wake up down there during a, a ritual. I mean, a literal ritual. They would be doing you know, um, sometimes they would do human sacrifice, sometimes they wouldn't. Sometimes it would just be, you know, rape and bondage. Sometimes it would just be, uh, it would be, who knows, a lot of things. But in those, uh, some, some of those students would be down there. Human sacrifice. So the idea that you would be in a triggered, I guess, during this prayer and worship meeting, and then the next thing you know, it would turn into like everyone would be kind of triggered at the same time. I'm assuming. I mean, I, I don't know that for a fact because okay. I don't know if just certain ones of us were triggered out of there and then some stayed for the front. Mm-hmm. I kind of think that might how it, how it played out. Like certain students or certain ones weren't that were sitting there still doing their thing. The rest of us were taken. Now, what they thought where we went, who knows? I don't know what they thought. Maybe they thought we went, they took us off for counseling or something. And they would sit there and finish their little prayer meeting out. I don't think they pulled everyone out. Okay, so the prayer meeting would go on, but then certain ones of you would be taken to another room at Oral Roberts University? Yeah, we would, ta- yeah, we would take them away. Or to a so, room? I mean, or... I, I think they, the Vesper meetings went on. Yes. Um, but without all the people that were there originally. And this is in full knowledge of the staff. Or you, 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 you have a limited point of view, I understand, but the, the, the certain people of the staff knew and, and were handling this. Oh, yeah. There was the, a lot of the instructors knew. Now I'm saying all of them because I can't say that for a fact, but mm-hmm. I know that a lot of them knew okay. what was going on. A lot of them suspected and a lot of them were involved. And then they took you to a place where adults would engage with uh, sex with children. Yes. And or some... torture or 
or whatever they felt like they needed to do. Because I got this really weird thing, and I know that there's spiritual principles involved in it, but it's something about the young and the innocent. Mm -hmm. And the more they torture them or the more whatever they do, <clears throat> it brings them more power. There, there's something about that. But do you feel it had a scientific aspect to it? In other words, like a like an organized aspect, like on a certain day they'd want a certain kind of ritual or a certain kind um, of... Yeah, they had certain days for certain kinds of rituals. I mean, I know they did. I don't know all of them. Yes. Um, and they had certain times when they did things only because they uh, wanted um, extra power to do something. I mean, let's mm -hmm. say they wanted... I, I don't This is just... I'm throwing this out there. Okay. Let's say... Uh, Maybe there was a political person that wanted to, to, to rise in ranks, and he wanted a little extra demonic help. Mm -hmm. They might have a special uh, sacrifice or a special whatever just for that person to get the power or to get whatever they need to get on and go ahead. Or maybe they decided somebody needs to be stopped. They're, they got somebody up there that, that didn't follow the rules, and they want to call they, they do a ritual to put a uh, a hold on them or to kill them or whatever to send the the demonic forces out to take care of it oh i've i've no that's been done in my behalf <laughs> yeah so i mean it doesn't always have to coincide to a special day yeah. but yeah they have the okay well, so whatever the, the need is for the group and then the the taken off and then you've seen um other children for example being tortured yeah, and a lot of that, I mean, I know a lot of that was done for programming, and a lot of that was done for ritual as well. So, I mean, what, where did it cross over? I don't know. Okay, the I idea mean, that the, the actual doing a torture would be to program that person being tortured. Or the ones that are watching. Or the ones watching to traumatize them in yeah, some way. Yeah, exactly, and, to so, traumatize them, yeah. And this was in a church setting. Yeah, this and, and most of the time, ironically, I mean, I, I was taken under to underground bases, you know, military installations. Okay. But most of the stuff that was done to me, unfortunately, was done through mainline Christianity. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's and why we know done, that we call um, that church the buildings, and it was done in you know, like yeah, that kind of thing. If you saw uh, the Oral Roberts family. I'm assuming, you know, just that the sun, the acorn doesn't fall far from the tree, so the sun is probably continuing on the tradition. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm I'm sorry to to to, to you know, but that's that's an implication from the testimony here. Um, if you could say something to this, the the living people, I, I is Oral Roberts is dead, of course, right? Or am I no, right? I think he's still hanging in unless he's died recently. Okay, it might be one of those weird. Th he's not dead. Gosh, he seems old though. Well, they, I mean, these guys end up, some of them living quite old. I don't understand. Maybe it's part of the bargain. But you saw him there involved along with. Uh, yeah, Oral other... Roberts most definitely. I mean, Oral Roberts raped me as a child. He raped you as a child. So if you could see him and confront him, what would you do? Tell him to stop preaching, you know, and stop being a hypocrite? Or... What would I say to him if I saw him? Yeah, I mean, this wow, is... that's a big one. What would I say? <laughs> yeah. I, the... I, you know, I don't know. I mean, what do you say to something like that? Well, you know, mostly I would say, you know, buddy, you got a lot to answer for, and you better either start repenting and getting right, or you know, you got a lot to answer for. And I don't even know that I'd even want to say anything to him. I'd probably just want to throw up and walk away. So there's no evidence of this. This is your word against his and, and theirs, if you will. You're, you're naming this institution, which is looked at as a, a paragon of virtue in our society, a paragon of, um, uh, if you will, of the gospel and of Jesus Christ and of all the good things in the Bible, uh, one of the top universities in the world, apparently. And this is going on in the highest levels of this place, know all about it at the, the highest ranks. And it, it's just mind-boggling, you know? I'm sorry. It's just... it. Well, you know, if you really think about it, I think like Stanford and Cambridge and Harvard and all of them, I think they were supposed to start out as, um, yeah, uh, you know, what, Christian universities? Correct. Yeah. That's okay. Right. So 
What's the difference? And then they became secularized over time. But, I mean, this Christian cover is awfully good. And then they get on TV and they have these prayers for people and they beg for money. And, they can... and, you know, it was the hardest thing for me to get through to people because, you know, when I, I warn them about this stuff, I warn them about the Benny Hens, I warn them about the Kenneth Copelands, I warn them about all this stuff, and they'll say, but I've been to their meetings, I felt the spirit, I saw people get healed, I heard well, them do this, and they, I saw they may all have, that. They may have had gifts given. I mean, the gifts of yeah, God. And I'm sitting here, you know, they're saying, you can't say that because they're anointed of God. And I'm like, no, they're not anointed of God. But couldn't they, they may have, have an anointing, but it's not a godly anointing. Couldn't they it's be anointed? But they say that the, the gifts of God are given without without recall. Couldn't they have gifts and then have gone to the dark side? But those gifts. No, I don't buy it. I don't buy no, it. No, they're these are just totally satanic people. They're totally satanic. I don't buy it because I think people who truly sold out to the Lord and get His gifts don't do that. The real thing doesn't do that. Yeah, why would you? Why would you go? You know, that way, if you had the real gift, if you're really one of God's, you're going to hear the master's voice. You're not going to go with the world system. Now, the implication that I get from all this is that the world is like this, that every institution uh, is corrupt in, in ways that also involve murder, child trafficking, probably drug trafficking, um, contraband, and so forth and so on, the world over, whether you take New Mexico, I heard all about the corruption yesterday in New Mexico. Unbelievable. Um, you take Washington, you take the church system, and the highest uh, evangelical churches, the highest Catholic church. We've heard about the Catholic churches and, the, uh, the, and, and what happens. We've heard about the sexual abuse. Of course, you know, we've also heard kind of in the fringe in Catholic churches about satanic rituals in the churches in certain churches in the middle of the night, you know, pentagrams on the floor. Oh, yeah, and, and, and I know that I don't even know up in Tulsa, the Catholic churches that, that were involved just as much as all the rest. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. There wasn't any difference. So the church would be more apt to worship Satan and do satanic ritual, including murder rituals, where they kill somebody in a church setting, and the people have, what, what an orgiastic experience over it? or the Yeah, whatever floats their boat at the time. I mean, and I'm being flip, and I don't mean to, but yeah. But usually, the the satanic um, sacrifice and uh, ritual orgy goes together hand in hand. Yes, so, and it's it's so grotesque you can't even imagine. You can't even it, it when these people they're so demon possessed. You can't you can't imagine what a totally demon possessed person is capable of doing because it is so far beyond human well okay. they eat, they There's can no eat, involved. eat flesh eat the heart um these are rituals we know about drink blood um you know engage in sex with children and engage and in torture um you know, sometimes i even think the torture is the worst because they torture people immersively to to extremes of you just can't even imagine mm-hmm. and the people that are victims of the torture do they know that, that they're, they're going to be tortured or I mean, do they do they suspect that there's something up? Uh, or um, probably. Or, I mean, most of them. I mean, they're drugged, obviously, and sometimes. Well, and then there's sometimes they're not. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes I guess they feel like they get more power out of somebody who's just in total terror, without mm-hmm. being in a stupor. So they just torture them to death, then. Yeah. And uh, sometimes they're drugged, but I just wonder if they torture their own or they look for victims outside. Uh, so, yeah, they well they have breeders. That, okay. that have they, they have babies just for the purpose of, of killing them or raising them into the program or mm-hmm. and sometimes they, they take their own. I mean, they, they, these people aren't loyal, okay. And if if they feel like, well, you know, you're on the bottom of the level and you're not really very great, well, we might as well just toss you in the mix and we'll get rid of you. I mean, they don't care. If people think that they get into this, that they're going to really um, get it. Most of the time. Oh, there's a few of them that have gotten really rich, and there's a few of them that's gotten some power. But the main part of them, they die penniless, and they die pitiful, and they die in a a horrible way. They they don't... All the great ones uh, of the past, the ones we know like Alistair Crowley, uh, who claims to have sacrificed babies and and, and drank their blood and, you know, eaten their hearts and all sorts of things. These people all died penniless and wrecked and destroyed. I mean, because when you play in games with with these deviant 
evil spirits, I mean, that's what you get. 